So, hello and welcome back to the uh, Champ Daddy podcast, episode number 44 for the season. It's entry day three. Well, it's not day three yet, Rona Groom, because they're on the way to post for the concluding race on race two, on race on day two, should I say, of the entry uh, festival. But it is our Grand National preview, proudly in association, of course, with Boyle Sports, our betting partner, Syndicates Dot Racing, the syndicate that will get you to the big days for affordable prices. Casey Law Radio Station. And of course, Gorham Park Racecourse, the premier racecourse in the southeast. And we hope to see all our listeners down there on the June Bank holiday at the Gorham Park Classic, a fantastic race. And of course, a card to look forward to on the June Bank holiday. Right, upcoming, the Atri Grand National. Stay tuned. Let us know your selections down below uh, for day three of the entry festival. But uh, I suppose the one, the 120 runner groom, let's kick it off. It's a handicap hurdle. Dan Skelton, obviously we mentioned Katira on yesterday's show. She won at six to one. Could we have another plot here at the top of the market? Three to one, West Balboa. Uh, she's well found, I suppose, after Katira, Basil. Uh, I think they both ran on the same day, didn't they? P- possibly prepping for this. Um, look, you can see why she's there. She's at the, the Skelton's obviously been uh, unbelievable at the Spring Festival so far in the handicap hurdles. She's course and distance winner at A3, of course. She's going to be towards the top of the market. Just probably the juice has gone out of the price now for me. Uh, the one I picked out at a double figure kind of price was Honor Gray for the Ben Pauling team. Uh, obviously, Ben uh, has having another good festival again. Unlucky today with the jukebox man. Uh, just to bump into another Mullins one. But uh, Honor Gray here, uh, I think he's probably been laid out for this. A couple of wins this season. Big gap between each run. Uh, one over the course of distance, which obviously always helps early in the season. Then didn't show up again till Ascot in February. Uh, one kind of snug enough there, thought it was good value for the winning margin. Uh, and uh, the most important thing with the race, the second, third and fourth have all come out in one since. So uh, he's obviously stayed away from Cheltenham to come back here, which always made sense because he's, of course, a distance winner. So I'd say, look, he's not unexposed or anything. He has a good few runs and he's not young. He's, I think he's a nine-year-old, but in the form of his life, kept for the race, stable in great form. Ben Jones in the place, just thought he was a bit of value around 10 to 1, 11 to 1, that sort of mark. Yeah, well, I'm going to side with uh, Team Ireland for the opening race on day three, and I'm going to side with my old friend, the Black Bamboo, Ronan Groom. I think we'll be hoping tomorrow afternoon that Jerry Hannon was calling the first race at at at, at entry, but I actually really like this horse's chance, and I think he's very unexposed still, having just this fourth run in a handicap. Look, he ran an absolute cracker uh, in the, of uh, course, at the Coral Cup at the Cheltenham Festival. He ran a cracker as well over three miles, staying on late uh, over the three miles, on its uh, just its second start in a handicap uh, at uh, the Dublin Racing Festival. So he has been competitive in these uh, big uh, spring handicaps, and I just think he could still be unexposed. I like the form of the Coral Cup. Obviously, Langer Dan, we saw earlier on in the week, ran an absolute cracker in that grade one, the entry hurdle. And if you, I suppose if you look back at the Coral Cup, he made a mistake two out. Um, didn't think he was all that fluent at the last, and he came thundering home up the hill and you know Sean Flanagan obviously was on board on that occasion so he's had his opportunity I suppose to uh, to come to terms with the horse and I just think it's interesting he's taken him here um, and he has a nice racing weight as well off 128 I thought he could definitely be competitive uh, in around a 10, a 10 to 1 mark and I thought in a race like this with 22 runners I'm happy to take on the likes of Cuthbert Dibble, uh, Gwilly May Boy, that's stepping up I think majorly in class and I was disappointed with Johnny Hugh and the Albert Bartlett so um, look, West Balboa could be absolutely anything in a race like this. She has plenty of weight for a mare, but Black Bamboo running groom in the opener on Entry Grand National Day. 155 is another competitive, uh, I was going to say a handicap. It's actually the Mersey Novices Hurdle, a grade one event over the two and a half miles. Nine runners and Gordon Elliott go for three wins on the bounce in this race. Brighter days ahead. She's now seven to four. Are you wit or do you pose? I'm against her, uh, Basil. Uh, like, like she's uh, she's very hyped up at this point now, and she's been given a bit of a pass for Cheltenham, and I can understand that to an extent. It was a slowly run race; they finished out fast there. Uh, probably played into the hands of the winner, Golden Ace, and she she did, still did well. Briar days ahead, but if she was as good as she's saying, um, you know, they seem to think she is. I thought she might have just been able to deal with that sort of uh, issue. Now, obviously, she could be better up at two and a half miles. 
um, and she gets the weight allowance here. And it's not an amazing race either. So I can see why she's obviously top of the market. But I just want to take her on just on the hype factor. Caldwell Potter, like, uh, obviously very intri- int- intriguing to see how he does. 740 grand. Actually, when you combine him and Staffordshire, not both sold at the same sale, you're talking 1.25 million there. So interesting just to watch that tomorrow and just see how the two of them get on. It wouldn't actually surprise me if the, the pair of them weren't in the top two or three. Uh, because I really like one here. This is my bet of the day, uh, probably given what given it away already. But Jimmy DeSoil here for uh, for Willie Mullins, uh, with the eight runners here, you can have a right smash each way. Uh, like I, I think he's got an excellent chance. Like he's he's second to Bally Byrne on only his third run over hurdles in the uh, in the Gallagher last time. Like Bally Byrne, will there will there be a better Gallagher winner in the next twenty years? I'm not sure there will. To be honest with you, definitely the best one in in, in the last decade. Uh, that race was running a really, really good time. Jimmy DeSoil, his form was just working out really well before that. He was a good winner. And then for that, on his debut, he bumped into Asian Master. like, And that was seen as like a you know below par maiden hurdle at the time, which just wasn't the case. Asian Masters obviously progressed away and ran a big race in the Supreme. And we just saw the Supreme form come to the fore again today. So I think everything's coming together here for Jimmy DeSoil. I actually think he'll improve because it was only his third start. Uh, Paul Townend in the plate now. This is this is my bet of the day. Uh, I think he's in around five to one, eleven to two. Mark, I've backed him already. Uh, uh, is good each way play, good each way shape to the race. I think it's a great bet, Jimmy Desoil. Right, the two thirty runner group going to come on to this now. It is the, uh, I suppose, uh, the second of the big handicaps on the day, or three miles and a furlong. Midnight River won the race last year uh, for the Skelton team. Have you anything picked out at a price here? I'm going with the Skeletons again, Basil, believe it or not. I'm going to follow them in this time, another handicap. Uh, a completely different profile now to Midnight River, who ran plenty last season, showed his hand, but was just uh, improving, I suppose, for the step up to three miles. I like this King of Rye Hope. Uh, like, go back and watch the Ascot run. I can't work this out whether Dan's, uh, Harry Skelton was, was messing around on this now or it was a very bad ride or it was just, you know, I, I, I was a steward. I at least have asked the question. I at least brought him in and said, what 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 were you up to? Because... He was Travely McTravelerson coming into the straight there, uh, coming there hard on the steel, uh, in behind three runners, then made an absolute clangor at the last and then seemed to lose all momentum and, and, and didn't win. Maybe that's exactly what they wanted to happen and this was the, the ultimate plan. But needless to say, he's uh, he's a nice kind of lightly raced type, uh, you know, should improve, flat course should suit him well. Uh, I can see him running well, and I'm hoping for a bit better of a price. He hasn't been lost in the market, but uh, out of those towards the top of the market, he was the one I want to risk the, the king of right hope. Boyle Sports, don't just bet, choose wisely. Sorry, Rona Groom, we got a little bit excited there watching the closing <laughs> stages of the last race at entry, but it looks like we have got some place money at 10 to 1. Affidil was traveling there hard on the steel, completely different tactics, by the way, as we're yeah. watching it live. Um, got an easy lead, but it was held up at Cheltenham, but it was held up on this occasion. But uh, yeah, I thought it was going to go and win El Jefe 40 we're, to 1. As we well. were odds on at the last, it said, Basil, to be honest. Odds on at the last, right? Okay, at least we got place money good each way. Shout by yourself and myself if I do say so in the last that entry today right we move on Ronan um, yeah you've given King of Roy Hope a good shout uh, in the uh, second race or in the third race should I say at entry on day three and he's exactly my pick uh, for the race uh, Skelton's a big, they're so dangerous in these big handicaps they won the race uh, last year as we mentioned with Midnight River and uh, you've more or less covered everything Ronan I mean um, if you look I suppose at the mistake he made at the last, you could totally mark up the performance of King of Roy Hope. He absolutely clouded it. He's only a pound a pound higher over fences as well. So I think there's plenty of scope of his mark of one uh, three seven. And um, yeah, look, he's he's only had eight starts for an eight year old. He's extremely likely raced, and I just think uh, the the drying ground as well is definitely going to suit him. Um, you know, we're not scheduled any more rain tomorrow and the ground seems to be drying out a little bit. So that's definitely a plus. Five to one. He certainly goes into my team sheet, King of Roy Hope. I think you go close. Crabilly, just to mention, his, his jump and really let him down again uh, at Cheltenham. Forward plan. I think uh, the handicapper might just have him off 137. Twig at a hard race. Cruise control is an interesting runner at eight to one. But definitely King of Roy Hope for me in that tree at 220, uh, 230, I should I say, at entry on day number three. Right, the 305 runner groom is uh, the uh, Liverpool hurdle. Flooring Porter in his pomp couldn't get it done in this race. Can he get it done at nine years of age, having its second start back over hurdles this season? 
Well, it seems like his main rival is going to be a 12 year old, so he definitely can if uh, if that's the case. So while I mention it, I'll quickly would like to stay to the start of that race at Aintree, Basel. That was we've been done over there with Avondale. They, they, I, I don't know. I missed it at the start. Just watched it again there. The starter. Wait till you see this. If you were annoyed with the starter at Cheltenham, you would be having absolute kittens about this. But anyway, we move on. Flooring Porter, uh, the nine-year-old. Yeah, beaten by Sarah de Burley here. Wasn't two seasons ago. Uh, interesting. This is a kind of tricky race, isn't it? The, the the vibes about this Sire de Burley seem to be hugely positive, isn't it? I think Gordon was thinking at, at, at Cheltenham that he was kind of only, you know, had him 75% and now he has him ready. Obviously, a winner of this race before. And, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, why haven't they run Tiopu? Uh, is, are the vibes so strong with Sire de Burley that that, that, that uh, they think he's just going to win this? It's quite interesting. Um, obviously, the run in the Sayers hurdle was quite eye-catching as well. He, he did well if, if he was only kind of, you know, 80%. Uh, or, or just a bit off off where he should be. Uh, so I, I'm not going to take up much of your time here, Basil, because I don't have a bet in the race. But Sire de Burley, for sure, was the one I'd be a gun-to-head kind of job. Uh, I think the ground is probably question for some of them. Obviously, Hewick likes a buddy one as well. I think he could be better on decent ground. Strong leader was interesting as well off that third on his first start of three miles. Uh, thought he could be a bit bigger though in the betting so I'll go with Sire de Burley but it's a reluctant <clears throat> vote for me Yeah, no, the one I'm going to side with is the one you've just mentioned strong leader I mean the drying ground again is going to suit him it's going to suit Hewick as well and Hewick I wouldn't surprise me if he ran a massive race in this genuinely I think uh, you know a King George winner coming into a race like this doesn't look the strongest um, you know I think Flooring Porter has had a hard race um, off you know and he hasn't Got the job done in this, uh, backing up at entry in the past. Uh, Sir de Burley is going for a hat trick in the race. What a story that would be. Uh, 12 years of age. Ran reasonably well, in fairness, at Shelton, finishing fifth in the stairs. Hidden Valley Lake, all his best form is on, you know, quite testing ground. And I don't particularly like the form from Navin. Um, you come down on Cr- Crambo as a horse I thought would run a lot better than he actually did in the stairs hurdle. Uh, I couldn't be backing him off the, off the back of his run at Cheltenham. And then you come down to Strong Leader, who absolutely loves the entry and, you know, ran an absolute cracker, staying on in the top novice behind in the pocket last season in that grade one. Um, that was as close as he came to winning a grade one. Ollie Murphy is flying it at the moment. 32% strike rate for Ollie. Um, six winners in the last fortnight. His stable is absolutely rocking. Um, I think that's definitely a positive. And, you know, it was his first run over three miles um, last time out in the Cleave, uh, where he was really hitting the line hard over the three miles. He stayed on powerfully up the hill, and he stayed on well, as mentioned, over the two miles in that grade one <clears throat> at entry last season. So I think you can... You can definitely see, I could definitely see him as a player. He's now nine to one. Going to take a swing, strong leader uh, each way in the uh, the entry or the Liverpool hurdle, should I say, uh, which is the uh, 305 at entry. Right, let's kick on. Grand National Runner Groom, give us the TriCast. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, go through a few of them, Basil. We might as well take a bit of. Take a bit of time over the the biggest betting race, I suppose, of the year. Uh, the the ones I liked, I just I was saying to you before we came on, like the Limerick Lace and Panda Boy, they're very they're used to squeeze out them now. You know, they I like them as potential improvers up at this trip because I think that's what you need now in this national. You don't need the experience. You need the the young horse, the young up and comer. You know, gone are the days where you need this big lump of a horse that can just jump up uh, and jump around and get around the first circuit and then you know stay on lay on. Uh, and, and jumping was the name of the game. These fences are pretty soft now. Um, so I was looking at Panda Boy and Limerick Lace, and obviously Limerick Lace, they, they both come right in. Limerick Lace on account of Mark Walsh riding him, GP, JP giving her the, uh, the the big vote of confidence yesterday as well. Chemical Energy is one I've backed, and I know you like it as well, so you'd be keen to talk about it as well. And I'm just worried about the ground, but you're telling me as well that, that it might just dry out a bit, which is, which is exactly what he needs. Now, he's very interesting on... His run in the National Hunt Chase last season, I thought he idled in front. Uh, Matter mission falling did him absolutely no favours, and he just got mugged laid on by Galliard. I mean, you know, the formula race has really worked out, but his mark has obviously been the same. He's only ran a couple of times since pulled up in an Irish National and sixth in a Kerry National. But Gordon has said all season that he needs decent ground, um, but he takes his chance here, which is interesting. We'll see what happens. The one I'm going to put up now is at a, at a, at a, for a price thing now. I just think there's a bit of juice there. Is Noble Yates obviously won this two seasons back, fourth last year, a pound lower this year. 
in probably just as good a form and he'd been kept over hurdles this season, obviously won the uh, the Cleave hurdle at Cheltenham, ran okay again in the stairs hurdle, but I'd say it's been all about the national for him coming back here. Obviously he has the course and distance know-how, the softer ground would suit him because he's just an absolute honest stair. So I think the softer ground could bring him closer, his staying power on the second circuit. And, I, you know, as always, I think I'll just go very quick here. It'll be uh, uh, the stairs to the four. And uh, I just think at 25 to one, if you're looking for something to what I always do is box the old forecasts. Like I'll put about seven or eight horses in and uh, I'll do box forecasts with them. Uh, I'd say he definitely should be one on your list at that 25 to one um, uh, for Emmett Mullins to, to, to go and do the business again. The three I like, Ronald Groom, let's narrow it down. Mahler Mission, second uh, in the uh, the Labrook Trophy. Um, you know, he jumps, he travels, he stays. Um, I thought there was every chance he was going to go and win the National Hunt Chase two seasons ago. John McConnell has kept this horse fresh for the National after finishing second in the Labrook Trophy. He already thought he ran an absolute cracker at Newbury. You know, he likes to be up there in the van. He's a brilliant jumper, so, so he'll absolutely love the entry fences. He obviously stays quite well. I thought he was going to, you know, go very, very close in the National Hunt Chase when he came down. Um, and I think he, <clears throat> a race like this, he could really enjoy. So he's coming here a fresh horse. I know he's a, a hefty enough weight, 11 stone five. But I think the, the, the conditions will be perfect for him. And I could see him really enjoying himself. 11 to one. He's my number one pick with Ben Harvey on board. You mentioned Chemical Energy. Um, obviously comes here a fresh horse also. The ground, look, he, he was really, he ran an absolute cracker, didn't he, in the National Hunt Chase last season. He was only beaten two and three parts of a length, over three miles, six furlong. He clearly stays well. I know Gordon has said that he's a better horse on nicer ground. I thought he ran quite well in the stall in the Kerry National as well. The ground drying out is certainly going to help him. And what I like about him, he's in off a featherweight, 10 stone nine, number 24 on, the, on your race card. Gordon Elliott obviously bidding for his fourth winner in the race, which would equal Ginger McCain. And that's the one that makes the appeal. Obviously, now we're in the Bicht of Silks. And after everything, they're after putting into the game, Ronald Groom. I'm sure Gordon Elliott will absolutely be thrilled on a week that, of course, Mead played Dublin in the football if Bechtov could take out the national 40 to 1. <laughs> Boyle Sports. Don't just bet. Choose wisely. Yes, and the last one I like is Statler. Look, I loved him for the Gold Cup last year. He's only had nine starts in his life over fences. It looks like a race that I could see him really enjoying, a marathon trip. Um you know, he jumps, he obviously stays. He won the National Hunt Chase uh, two seasons ago. And Patrick Mullins on board knows the horse quite well. I just think I could see him really enjoying a race like this. The, the ground conditions aren't going to be a worry. Again, he's 11 stone five, but he's 50 to one. I think that that might just underestimate his chances. I think he's a better horse than 50 to one in a Grand National two seasons, or a season, should I say, after finishing second at Leperstown, not beating all that far to gallop in the champ in a grade one. So, um, yeah. Statler, 50 to 1. He's my third pick. So that's the TriCast. Maller Mission, Chemical Energy. And let's hope there's one more big day in Statler with Paddy on board. Right, Sarah Runner Groom, let's come on to uh, which is the uh, penultimate race, the five o'clock. It is the McGull Novices Chase, Grade 1. What do you like? Uh, if interested, if found a 50 horses f- favor here. A good bit of placing by Gordon, obviously. Uh, looks a, a lot softer race than what he probably f- uh, face at Punchestown, probably taking on Gaelic Warrior again. So you can see why they come over. Uh, give him a big chance, of course, to do. But I think Nickelback could be the way into the race. Uh, I just see this two miles flat course uh, entry really suiting him if he goes off in front. Now, obviously, he had those conditions earlier in the season when he was beaten. By Master Chewy, but that's no bad thing, or it's not. Uh, sorry, it's no bad form as such. I think Master Chewy was going to run a good race in the Arca before he came down. So he he's since won a Grade One, and he's coming back to two miles now. I I just thought there was a bit of juice in his price. The last price I saw was like eight to one or something like that. So that would be for me a good alternative to the favorite each way. Uh, but I'd, I'd appreciate he's <clears> one to be. He's probably a bit underrated. Found at fifty, he's been. Uh, everyone presume he's <clears> going to go up and trip, but he's got really good form now over Grade One trips. Obviously, second to let's say Tomp, and then did best of the rest. Obviously in the article as well. So uh, definitely be hard to beat. But if you wanted to take him on, I'd go with Nickelback. I thought he was possibly the better of the day at that price found a 50 and um you know I, I wasn't too keen on him going into the article but he's run an absolute cracker and he's run he's run very very well in four grade ones back to back so he's holding his form he's the top rate in, in here Rona Groom and what I liked in the article as well is you know I know at Leperstown he, he 
he, he shifted out to his right, exaggerated, uh, jumping out to his right on a couple of occasions. Um, but he didn't seem to do that at, at, at Cheltenham. I thought he ran a fine race. And, um, you know, I, I know I know entries a sharper track. I just think it could be above these. And and obviously, Elette Tomp has done the arc of form. No harm by coming out and winning over two and a half miles. Hercule de Sol, obviously, in here for Willie Mullins and Mark Walsh. You'd have to respect them. I think he's uh, bidding for six wins on the bounce, uh, I think. Etalon, that's the interesting one. I just wonder, would he be up to this class for the skeleton team? It's a big jump up in class. Master Chewy has been disappointing. And Nickelback, um, I think his form is over further and there's plenty of pace on here early. I think, you know, found a 50s experience in grade ones. He might just actually be able to take a lead in a race like this and it could help him. He'll stay well. And uh, yeah, I, I like his chances in here at two to one. And the 5.35, another horse owned by Bechtev. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I give a really good shout in this race uh, to Castle Ivers. I thought he was very visually impressive uh, when last seen. He's uh, three wins from four on the race course. His only defeat was on the All Weather that was at uh, Lingfield. But I thought he really caught the eye last time at Weatherby over the over the two mile uh, in a bumper. And just looking at his form, obviously he was a seven length winner. He's eight to one in here. It's a tentative pick. Obviously they're all young horses. Plenty open to any amount of improvement. I was impressed by the favourite when he won last time out, Mr. Miggett. Um, but boat wins have been on heavy ground. It's going to be that little bit drier. I think Castle Ivers is a classy horse for a stable, very much in form at the moment. We mentioned Ollie Murphy and Sean Bone. Could they be on the double? Could Gordon Elliott and uh, Ollie Murphy be celebrating tomorrow evening on the groom? Every chance, yeah. Every chance. I don't have anything to add to your uh, bumper. I haven't even looked at the race, but uh, you'd like to see it. And the Bechtov, they, they, they do like uh, to celebrate the wins. They like a nice little drink after the races, so I'd love to see it. I'd say that'll be the only thing me will be winning this weekend, Basil. Now, all the same, you did mention the Leinster uh, quarterfinal on Sunday, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd give Chemical Energy a better chance in the National than me doing the doing the upset over Dublin. Unfortunately, I know, been, I know it's been all about Carlo and Willie Mullins and, of course, UK Trainers Championships that I have to say, I think he's a really decent chance of doing it. Uh, but looking at my predictions tomorrow, Rona Groom, I think Gordon Elliott can get a double. I think Ali Murphy can get a double. And who knows who wins the Grand National. Best of luck with your selections if you are having a bet in the National. And, of course, uh, thanks once again to our proud partners, Boyle Sports, our betting partner, Syndicate Stat Racing, KCLR and Gorn Park Racecourse, the premier racecourse in the southeast of Ireland. We look forward to seeing you at Punches Town. Best of luck with your selections for the National. And let us know your picks for day three of entry down below. Thanks very much for watching. <laughs> 